Hello, uh, elementary school students across America and on United States military bases around the world. Michael T. Mondak back with you on this Tuesday. Hey, and as you know, I've been coming to you virtually every day during the week to read one picture book to you, your teachers, and your parents. I always like to start with a little teaser as to what I'll be reading each day. Here's today's teaser. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be part of a fun activity but didn't know what to do to be part of it? Well, I'm very fortunate to have roles in fun events around the Shenango Valley that I feel is a, a very important role. Handing out balloons to you children. I've always had a soft spot in my own heart for you, ch for children like you. But Saggy Baggy Elephant was excited that he wanted to be part of a fun carnival, but didn't know what his act would be. He wanted to do other things with his friends, but then remembered he could dance. Fact, and then dancing became his act. It's the basic storyline of the book I'm about to read. Saggy Baggy Elephant, No Place for Me, with a storyline written by Gina Ingoglia and illustrations by Rick Ricard Waltz. If you're ready, we're going to a magical place called Little Golden Bookland filled with wonderful things to see and do and where every day is a special day just waiting to be discovered. Let's get going. Saggy Baggy Elephant woke up late. He had to hurry to Homeway Hollow's big playing field to get ready for Carnival Day. Saggy didn't know what he was going to do in the carnival yet, but he was sure it would be fun. Hi, Saggy, said five little clowns. It was Pokey Little Puppy and his brothers and sisters. Saggy laughed. <laughs> you look great, he said. Would you like to join us, asked Pokey. I'm afraid he can't, said one of Pokey's brothers. We don't have enough makeup to cover all of Saggy's wrinkles. Or his trunk, added Pokey's sister. That's all right, said Saggy. I'll find something else to do. Saggy heard a loud roar. Tawny scrawny lion was practicing his act in front of a group of rabbits. Hi, Saggy, said Tawny. Why don't you join me with your trumpeting? The two friends roared and trumpeted together. What a racket! The ground shook and trees, trees swayed with the noise. Too loud! Too loud! shouted all the rabbits, hopping up and down and holding their ears. Ah, eh, sorry, said Tawny. Looks like this is a one-man act. Thanks anyway, said Saggy. I'll look around some more. Saggy, watch this, called Baby Brown Bear. He was balancing upside down on a big rubber ball. That's really something, said Saggy. I wish I could do that. Baby Brown Bear scrambled to the ground. Why don't you try it, he suggested. Saggy tried to climb up on the hill, on the ball, but he flipped over and landed with his feet up in the air. I bet my trunk a little, he said, straightening it out. I'd better look for another act. Wee, wee, look at me, sang a tiny voice. It was shy little kitten. She was jumping up and down on a trampoline. I'm surprised to see you performing in the carnival, said Saggy. You are usually so shy. The little kitten finished with a triple backflip 
and landed on her four paws. <coughs> I'm not doing this alone, she said. It's a family act. Cats always land on their feet, you know. Do you like to give it a try? Saggy's trunk still hurt a little. I've done enough flipping for one day, he said. Saggy was getting worried. He was running out of things to try. He decided to stop and think. I'm strong. And I can carry things with my trunk, he said to himself. Those are things I can do well. In the distance, he could hear Tootle the steam engine. He was blowing his whistle somewhere in little golden bookland. That's it, Saggy cried. I'll help Tootle carry supplies and passengers to the carnival. Tootle was down at the harbor with Scuffy the tugboat and Katie Caboose. Do you need help? asked Saggy, running to them. We're all finished, he said Tootle. I just dropped off the last load for the carnival. Now I'm going there myself. Let's race. No thanks, said Saggy in a sad little voice. I think I'll go home for a while. As Saggy walked slowly home, he heard the carnival music in the distance. He was sure that the music would remind, make him sad because it would remind him that he wasn't part of the carnival. But instead, the music sounded nice. Hmm. Makes me feel like dancing, he said. I haven't done that for a long time. Maybe it will cheer me up. Saggy began to dance. He thumped his big feet on the ground. One, two, three, kick. One, two, three, kick. That's pretty good, said a voice. It was one of the older elephants from his herd. Really, asked Saggy. Do you think it's too thumpy and bumpy? Stumpy and bumpy, all right. But it's nice. And different, too, answered the older elephant. Why don't you dance in the carnival? I'd like that, said Saggy. The two elephants went back to the carnival. Friends and families, shouted the older elephant, gather round. I'd like to present the one and only dancing Saggy Baggy Elephant. Saggy danced and thumped. And everybody clapped and cheered. Tawny scrawny lion ran up to him. I didn't know you could dance, he said. Isn't it hard, asked shy little kitten. It's fun, said Say. I'll teach you. All together now. One, two, three, kick. One, two. Three, kick. And that, my little boys and girls, friends, is the story. Join me again tomorrow, same time, same channel.